Hello everybody, uh, welcome back to part 3 of generating functions and today we'll be looking at how we can use generating functions to uh, well one get a generating function for a recurrence relation and use that to explicitly solve the recurrence relation. Alright so I'm going to going to be using the Fibonacci sequence because I think most people are familiar with this. This is the uh, most common recurrence relation. Um, but I must say that, that some details of, of sort of solving for the solving for the Fibonacci numbers explicitly will be a bit confusing because of how simple the coefficients are. But I'll, I'll get to that. Alright, so we, we have this recurrence relation, right? And we know that if we take two previous terms in the Fibonacci sequence, we add them together, we get the next one. And sort of a nice way we can represent that with generating functions is by term shifting, which I talked about in the last video about manipulations. So that if we shift, if we have our, if we have our generating function for Fibonacci numbers, let's say f of x, then we can multiply by x or x squared to shift the terms and then we can uh, mess around with the polynomials and that we get and make things cancel out by shifting the terms. So let's look at how we can do that. So I'm going to write out the first few terms of the generating function for the Fibonacci numbers. Uh, and that is, we get x plus x squared plus 2x cubed plus 3x fourth and, and so on. And this is, no, this is not 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, it's, it's the Fibonacci numbers. And so like I said, we can use term shifting. So if we look at x times f of x, and what that is equal to, uh, just like in the last video, we can, or I will sort of write it so we have the second degree terms lining up and, and so on and so forth and so we get x squared plus x cubed plus 2x cubed or that, yeah, no, no that, that should be a 4 um, and uh, it's like that and so forth and then we have x squared times f of x which starts out with x cubed and x4 so we notice if I sort of uh, draw a line between the f of x and the x and x squared f of x, then we notice that if we were to add these two together, x f of x and x squared f of x, we would get x squared at, we get x squared plus two x cubed plus three x fourth and so on and so forth. And we notice that those terms align with the original polynomial. And there's no coincidence, this is due to this recurrence relation here. Uh, so this is how term shifting is helping us. So if I subtract x times f of x and I subtract x squared times f of x, then everything will cancel except for this x. So we have something that's in terms of f of x and we have something, or we just have something that's not in terms of f of x. And easy enough, we can just factor out an f of x and simplify. And what we get is that f of x, the generating function for the Fibonacci numbers, is equal to x divided by 1 minus x minus x squared. Ooh, well, we've got the we've got our generating function now. And on its own, it doesn't really do much. We can we can solve some problems with it, which I'll uh, whenever we do more more sort of problem solving type problems, I'll, I'll I'll show how we can use this this generating function here. But on its own, it doesn't give us an explicit form for uh, the Fibonacci numbers because we still have to either do polynomial division, which is yucky, or Taylor expansion, which is also yucky, so it doesn't help us much, but what if, what if we just did polynomial, uh, or not, 
a partial fraction decomposition, right? Because we have a quadratic here. And if we, whenever we have a, a recurrence relation of this form, where it's just like two terms on this side and the nth term here, we will get a quadratic here. And this quadratic is closely, I say closely related to what we call the characteristic polynomial of a recurrence relation. Now, the characteristic polynomial here is x squared is equal to x plus 1, or x squared minus x minus 1 is equal to is equal to 0. And notice that this, even if we were to sort of negate it, right, we'd have negative, or no, not, not even, not even, right? But this is sort of, this is not, we, we sort of have a negative, here, I, I, I guess I don't know how to, how to phrase this, but this is not our, um, our characteristic polynomial is in fact if I were to plug in say 1 over x right I would have 1 over x squared minus 1 over x minus 1 is equal to 0 and then if I multiply everything by x squared I get 1 minus x minus x squared is equal to 0. This is what we have here. So basically this whatever quadratic we get here if we do this for any type of recurrence relation we don't get the characteristic polynomial. We get sort of the inverse characteristic polynomial. Whatever we get when we plug in 1 over x and and clear denominators. Well, how does this help us? If you know anything about polynomial transformations, we can see that if if x or, let, or let's say if r r is some root of the characteristic polynomial, then 1 over r is a root of of this polynomial because we're plugging in 1 over x so 1 over 1 over r will give us r and, and clearly 0 is 0 is never a root here because we have a we don't have a factor of x so we don't have to deal with what well, well, what if 0 is a root because it's not <laughs> so basically let's say that the two roots of our characteristic polynomial are r1 and r2 and we can find those later then we can use partial, de partial fraction decomposition and we can say that this is equal to a some, some constant a times 1 and we can actually write 1 minus r1x since 1 over r minus 1 is a root if we plug in 1 over r minus 1 we would get 1 minus 1 which of course is 0 so this is uh, this is the first fraction and the second fraction is just b is the same thing b times or b divided by 1 minus um, r2x and we notice that this both of these terms right or you might be asking how how we how we simplify things but both of these terms are um, are, are very resemblant of 1 minus or 1 over 1 minus x right these are generating functions on their own and a key fact which is pretty trivial is that if two generating functions are equal then their coefficients must be equal all of their coefficients and so since this is sort of this generates well this is all of the x to the n terms right but something like this 
where it's r1x, we just plug in r1x into x to the n and we get sort of the infinite sum of r1 to the n, uh, x to the n. And then we have our constants, right? But this, this is just saying that if we equate this, f of x is equal to an infinite sum of the nth Fibonacci number times x to the n. So what we're saying here is that the nth Fibonacci number is equal to a r1 to the n plus b times r2 to the n. And so we can use, if we use partial fraction decomposition, we can actually solve for a and b or we could plug in values of n and solve for a and b. And then we can use the quadratic formula to find r1 and r2. I'm not going to show all that work because I've basically just laid out the, the process of it. And that should be enough. If, if you want to do it for yourself, you can do that. And so what we get is what we call Binet's formula, because I guess he was the first person to find it, in that the nth Fibonacci number is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 5 uh, uh, times. And so this gives us, if you just plug in n, you can calculate the nth Fibonacci number. So obviously this is very nice for computers. Uh, for humans, not so much. Um, just doing anything over squared is a nightmare. And um, it's much faster probably to just write it out by hand. But computers can do this you know, very quickly. And recursion isn't often very nice for computers to do. So just sort of a real world application, sort of. But anyway. Uh, this is how generating functions can be used to solve recurrence relations. And um, this partial fraction decomposition here is actually applicable for, for more than a uh, two-term sort of thing. You, you know, recurrence, if you just calculate the, the characteristic polynomial, the explicit form will always be, um, you'll have the roots to the nth power and then times some coefficient. Um, and that can be proved more generally just using generating functions. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you.